Welcome aboard. Today we're diving into the world of aviation safety, starting with the International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO. This specialized agency of the United Nations sets international standards and regulations for aviation safety, security, efficiency and regularity, as well as for aviation environmental protection. Among its numerous annexes, one stands out for its critical role in aviation safety, Annex 13. Annex 13 is all about aircraft accident and incident investigation. It provides the framework for conducting investigations into aviation accidents and incidents. Its main purpose? To prevent such incidents from happening again by identifying the causes and contributing factors. So, Annex 13 plays a pivotal role in ensuring that when things go wrong, we learn as much as possible to prevent future occurrences. Now, why does Annex 13 exist? What's its main objective, you may ask? Well, let's delve into it. The heart of Annex 13 lies in its commitment to aviation safety. It has a clear and focused objective to enhance aviation safety worldwide by ensuring comprehensive and systematic investigations of accidents and incidents. Every incident, no matter how seemingly insignificant, is a chance to learn, adapt and improve. Properly investigated, these incidents provide invaluable lessons, becoming stepping stones rather than stumbling blocks. They offer a unique opportunity to uncover faults, weaknesses and potential threats in the system. By learning from these past incidents, we can create strategies and safety measures to prevent them from happening in the future. That's the beauty of Annex 13. It turns each incident into a lesson, each lesson into a prevention. Through Annex 13, every incident becomes an opportunity to enhance aviation safety. So, what incidents does Annex 13 cover? The scope of Annex 13 is broad, encompassing a wide variety of incidents. It doesn't just cover catastrophic crashes, but also incidents where no one is hurt, yet the aircraft is damaged or the flight crew's ability to operate is impaired. For instance, hard landings, near misses and engine failures all fall under the purview of Annex 13. Now, you might wonder, why investigate minor incidents? The answer lies in the philosophy of continuous learning and prevention. Even the smallest incidents can provide invaluable insights into potential risks. Take the case of the engine blade that broke off mid-flight. It didn't cause a crash, but the investigation led to the discovery of a manufacturing flaw. This in turn prompted improvements in the manufacturing process and thus enhanced flight safety. Whether minor or major, each incident investigated under Annex 13 brings invaluable insights. When an accident occurs, who's responsible for the investigation? Well, according to ISAO Annex 13, the responsibility falls on the state where the incident took place. The state of occurrence, as it's called, shoulders a number of key responsibilities. Firstly, it's tasked with initiating the investigation process. This involves setting up an investigative body and ensuring that all necessary resources and expertise are available. It's also responsible for coordinating with other states that might have an interest in the investigation, such as the state of registry, the state of the operator, or the state of design and manufacture of the aircraft. To illustrate, let's consider a hypothetical case. Say, an aircraft registered in country A, operated by a company from country B, crashes in country C. In this case, country C, being the state of occurrence, will spearhead the investigation, while also collaborating with countries A and B. The state of occurrence also has the duty to preserve and protect the crash site and manage the release of information to the public while ensuring the findings are used to improve aviation safety and not to apportion blame or liability. The state of occurrence, therefore, holds a crucial role in the initial stages of an investigation. An incident has occurred. What's the next step? Following an aviation accident or incident, the foremost step is to alert the relevant authorities. This is crucial for the initiation of a thorough investigation. The process of notification is outlined in Annex 13 of the International Civil Aviation Organization's guidelines. Let's imagine a hypothetical scenario. An aircraft encounters an issue mid-flight and is forced to make an emergency landing. The first action taken by the pilot or crew is to report the incident to the air traffic control. 
The ATC in turn informs the aircraft operator who then has the responsibility to notify the relevant aviation authorities of the state where the incident occurred. The notification process doesn't stop there. The aircraft operator also needs to inform the authorities of the state of the aircraft's registry, the state of the operator and the state of design and manufacture of the aircraft. Efficiency and accuracy are key in this process. Information about the incident, such as the nature, time and location of the occurrence, the identification of the aircraft, the details about the injuries and damages and other pertinent details must be communicated promptly and accurately. Prompt and accurate notification is the first step towards a thorough investigation. Once notified, how does the investigation process unfold? It begins with the formation of an investigative body, often spearheaded by the state where the incident occurred. This body is made up of experts with a variety of specialties, each bringing their unique skill set to the table. Together, they start by examining the incident site, meticulously collecting data and interviewing witnesses, if any. As information is gathered, the team works to piece together the sequence of events leading up to the incident. This might involve recreating the flight path, studying the weather conditions, or analyzing the aircraft's mechanical status. Simultaneously, the investigative body begins drafting an interim report providing initial findings and potential safety recommendations. But the investigation doesn't stop there. It continues until a comprehensive final report is prepared, documenting all findings and formalizing safety recommendations. To illustrate, let's consider an example. Imagine a hypothetical incident occurring on the 1st of January. The investigative body is formed by the 5th, the interim report might be published by April, and the final report could be released by the following January. From start to finish, every step of the investigation is designed to extract vital information. Preserving the scene of an incident is crucial, but why? Well, much like detectives at a crime scene, aviation investigators rely on physical evidence to piece together the puzzle of what caused an accident or incident. Every fragment of debris, every skid mark on the runway, every piece of data from a flight recorder, they all hold potential clues. That's why Annex 13 stipulates a clear mandate for the preservation and protection of evidence. The site of the incident is treated with utmost respect and care, with measures taken to prevent disturbance of wreckage and other material evidence. This is a delicate process, often requiring the expertise of various specialists. It's not just about the physical site either. Documentation, air traffic recordings and maintenance records are all preserved as part of the evidence. In essence, protecting evidence is a meticulous process but a vital one. It allows investigators to reconstruct events, identify contributing factors, and ultimately make recommendations to enhance aviation safety. So the next time you hear about an air incident, remember, behind the scenes, there's a detailed process unfolding, protecting evidence, a non-negotiable in the quest for aviation safety. Aviation is global, and so is the spirit of cooperation when it comes to safety. When an incident occurs, it's not just the responsibility of the state where it happened. A global collective effort is required, which is where Annex 13 truly shines. It fosters international collaboration, encouraging different states to work together during an investigation. This could involve sharing resources, expertise or crucial information that could aid in the investigation process. For instance, let's consider a past incident where international cooperation proved to be instrumental. The investigation of the tragic crash of Air France Flight 447 in 2009 was an exemplary case. It involved the collaboration of multiple countries, including France, Brazil and the United States. Each contributed their unique resources and expertise, leading to a comprehensive investigation that ultimately improved aviation safety worldwide. This is what Annex 13 is all about, fostering a sense of unity and cooperation in the name of safety. In the sky, we're all on the same team. Cooperation is key. As aviation evolves, so does Annex 13. Let's look at how it's kept up with the times. Just like technology and aviation practices, Annex 13 is not a static document. It's a living, breathing guideline that changes and grows to meet the needs of an ever-evolving industry.
It's been updated periodically to accommodate new technologies, address emerging safety concerns, and reflect lessons learned from past investigations. These updates are crucial in maintaining the relevance and effectiveness of Annex 13. For instance, recent amendments have broadened the scope of Annex 13 to include not only traditional aviation accidents, but also serious incidents involving drones and space vehicles. These changes highlight the continuous effort to ensure that the guidelines remain robust, comprehensive and in step with the times. The implications of these updates are significant. They mean that the lessons learned from every serious incident, no matter how small or what type of aircraft is involved, can contribute to the overarching goal of improving aviation safety worldwide. Annex 13 continually evolving for the safer skies of tomorrow. Before we conclude, let's address some frequently asked questions about Annex 13. Many wonder, what incidents fall under Annex 13? Well, it covers aircraft accidents and serious incidents which need in-depth investigation. Another question we often hear is, who is responsible for the investigation? The state of occurrence has the responsibility, but international cooperation is key, especially when the aircraft belongs to another state. One cannot overemphasize the significance of Annex 13. Its primary objective is improving aviation safety by ensuring that accidents and incidents are thoroughly investigated. It's all about learning from past incidents to prevent future occurrences. The process includes notification, investigation, protection of evidence and international cooperation, with each step being crucial for a comprehensive understanding of what went wrong and how it can be prevented in the future. Moreover, Annex 13 is not a static document. It evolves over time, with amendments and updates made to keep pace with the ever-changing landscape of aviation technology and safety protocols. That's our journey through Annex 13 a testament to the relentless pursuit of aviation safety. Until next time, fly safe!